Good morning, friends. Pastor Neil here from the Riverway Christian Fellowship, West Kirby in the Wirral. I trust that the Lord has been blessing you this past week, and I trust that your heart is ready for this meeting this morning. Yes, we're trusting that God will bless you as you're taking part of this uh, meeting with communion, listening to God's word, and I trust that you'll be standing when the uh, when we come round to uh, the worship time. We love to stand, Ruth and I, and we love to partake that way uh, as we sing our songs to the Lord. Our love songs to him, we just want to bless his, his name and bless his heart. So we, we give it all that we've got. Praise God. Friends, this past week we've been busy. There's uh, four churches in India that have been blessed through the work of Riverway. Four churches, that's way over four or five hundred people who have been blessed with food. People in great, great need, friends out there. And uh, we've been able to help them. And we have a little clip, a little, a little film, a little video film of one of those, uh, uh, one or two of those events that took place only a few days ago as food was handed out to people who work in the fields. People working in the fields have got no work at all because of the COVID-19. Uh, they're not able to go out in the fields and they get paid at the end of the day. Just like it says in the Bible about the labourers at the end of the day getting their wages. So, so it is out there with the field labourers. They get paid at the end of the day. And if they're not allowed to go out there and work the fields, they have no money. If they have no money... They have nothing to take home to their families for food and um, they've been hit really bad out there in India as for quite some weeks they have not had the money, they've not had the food and it's been a privilege, been a joy that we can touch some people. Other than ourselves, uh, in the world people are in greater need than ourselves and so you pray for them, praise God. Now. I have a little reading here. It comes from uh, uh, the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. And it's a story regarding Abraham. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am the Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between you and me and will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be a father to many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be called Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you, and I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your descendants after you in their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession and I will be their God. Well there's friends, there's God speaking to a man at 99 years of age. Now mark that out, 99 years of age and taking him up and starting life all over again. New family, new destiny, new timing for him from God. So let none of us say we're too old to be used of God. We're neither too young, neither too old. God will take us up and God will use us. And we all want that. We all want the Lord to touch our lives, to use us, to become profitable and to have a future. And that's for you and that's for me. Well, I believe we're going to have a reading as well today. Uh, Carol Howard, our dear sister, she's going to give the reading today so we look forward to the video and we look forward to Cal giving the reading and to all those taking part in this service this morning may the Lord bless you
లాక్డౌన్ నేపథ్యం ఉపాధి కోల్పోయిన పిఠాపురం రథాలపేట నిరుపేదలకు ప్లెంటీ టు షేర్ మినిస్ట్రీ సంస్థ నిత్యావసర సరుకులు పంపిణీ చేశారు లాక్డౌన్ కారణంగా ఉపాధి లేక నిరుపేదలైన వంద కుటుంబాలకు రామచంద్రపురం మండలం వ్యాగాయమ్మ పేటకు చెందిన ప్లెంటీ టు షేర్ మినిస్ట్రీ ఫౌండర్ అండ్ ప్రెసిడెంట్ రెవరెండ్ డాక్టర్ విజయరాజు ఆధ్వర్యంలో భౌతిక దూరం పాటిస్తూ నిత్యావసర సరుకులు పంపిణీ చేయడం జరిగింది కష్టకాలంలో పేదలను ఆదుకోవడమే నిజమైన సేవభక్తి అని ప్రభుత్వం చెబుతున్న జాగ్రత్తలు తప్పగా పాటించి కరోనా వైరస్ వ్యాప్తిని అరికట్టాలని ఒక్కొక్క కుటుంబానికి ఒక వారం పాటు సరిపడేటట్టుగా ఏడు వందల యాభై రూపాయలు విలువ చేసే సామగ్రి ఐదు కేజీల బియ్యం ఒక లీటర్ రుచి గోల్డ్ ఆయిల్ ఒక కేజీ పంచదార ఒక కేజీ కరాచీ నూక ఒక కేజీ కందిపప్పు ఒక కేజీ చింతపండు ఆరు కేజీల కూరగాయలు గ్రుడ్లు పంపిణీ చేయడం జరిగింది ఈ కార్యక్రమంలో రెవరెండ్ గ్రేస్ విక్టోరియా కాకినాడ జీజేహెచ్ వైద్యురాజు డాక్టర్ సారా విక్టోరియా పిఠాపురం ఫాస్టర్స్ అసోసియేషన్ ప్రెసిడెంట్ డాక్టర్ విక్టర్ సామ్యూల్ ఫాస్టర్ డి ఫిలిప్ జి జాన్ ఆల్ఫ్రెడ్ శ్రీమతి బి మహాలక్ష్మి ప్రతిభ తదితరులు పాల్గొన్నారు పిఠాపురం పట్నంలో రథాలపేటలో వంద మంది ఫ్యామిలీస్కి వంద ఫ్యామిలీస్కి ఈ కోవిడ్ నైన్టీన్ లాక్డౌన్ వలన నిరాశ్రయలేనటువంటి పేద కుటుంబాలకి ఆహార ధాన్యాలు గ్రుడ్లు అలాగనే రైస్ కిరాణా మొత్తం వారానికి సరిపడి కూరగాయల వస్తువులు నిత్యావసర వస్తువులు పంపిణీ చేయడం జరుగుతుంది ఏం చేస్తానంటే ఈ యొక్క కరోనా మరి చాలా విపరీతంగా వ్యాప్తి చెందుతున్న ఈ దినాల్లో కుటుంబానికి వంద కుటుంబాలకి ఇక్కడ అలాగనే పిత్తాపురం మండలంలో గ్రామం అయినటువంటి చిత్రాడ గ్రామంలో వంద కుటుంబాలకి ఈ నిత్యావసర వస్తువులు వారానికి సరిపడేటువంటి వస్తువులు సుమారు ఒక్కొక్క కుటుంబానికి ఏడు వందల యాభై రూపాయలు విలువ చేసేటువంటి వస్తువులు మేము ఇవ్వడం జరుగుతుంది The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be those who walk in that way. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there, nor will any ferocious beast get up on it. They will not be found there. But only the redeemed will walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. Amen. Good morning friends my shout out goes to Auntie Judy Auntie Jill and Auntie Trisha I want to read a promise word for you from Isaiah 40 verse 31 but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint god bless you and take care bye good morning riverway it's wonderful to welcome you to our service this morning it's a privilege to lead you in worship this morning Before I do, I would just like to start off by sharing something that's been on my heart recently. 
So I keep thinking in my head about how crazy it would have been if how on Christmas day when we were all eating our Christmas dinner, if someone had come into the room and told us what lie ahead in those coming weeks, you know, that just a few weeks later it would become illegal to enter each other's houses or to hug each other, that school would completely stop and, you know, just, we would never have believed it. It would have just been way too crazy for our minds. But it just got me thinking about, in the Bible, examples of when things happen suddenly. And, you know, God is a God of suddenly. You know, as, as in the world, lots of things happen, terrible things happen very suddenly and things change and stuff. But God has given us plenty of examples in the Bible when he has worked suddenly. You know, I think about the shepherds in the fields that night when they were just on their night shift. They were looking after the sheep, plodding on, going ahead like any other night. And suddenly all the angels are there pronouncing this amazing news to them that would change their lives forever and change the world forever, that Jesus the Messiah was going to be born that night. And then you think about Paul, Saul then, when he was on the road to Damascus, on his way to persecute and hunt down Christians, that suddenly there was this flash of light and his whole life was transformed as he had an encounter with Jesus. And then later on, Paul and Silas in prison, there was a suddenly an earthquake as they're worshipping. There's an earthquake the, the chains break off, the doors fling wide open, and they're set free. You know, they were probably sitting in there singing those songs, thinking that they were the last songs they were going to be singing in that. But God is the God of suddenly. And, you know, we're going to sing about songs like that this morning. We're going to sing about the victory. You know, the battle belongs to the Lord. You know, our, our job is just to worship the Lord. And as we worship the Lord, you know, our circumstances, the things that are, are storms that are surrounding us, they just feel like they get smaller and God gets so much bigger as we worship him. And so we're going to sing about that. We're going to sing about how in the middle of the storm, we're going to keep on praising God because we have hope. We have faith that God will make us suddenly, that he will make a way where there seems to be no way. He will make the possible where it seems to be impossible. And we believe that in Jesus' name. So I just encourage you, if you can, just to, to stand up with me this morning and to really just just worship the Lord really give him all the praise because he is glorious and he is due all the praise amen amen and he has won the victory hallelujah hallelujah
Take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good Yeah! You take what the enemy
power in your name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord Most High. You hid in glory in creation. Now Stand against what a powerful name.
nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a wonderful name it is What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a wonderful name it is Nothing compares to Well, good morning again, friends. God bless you. I'm so thrilled that there's so many of you are ready every week with the wine and the bread to take communion. And people have told me how it means so much to them to partake together, as it were, as a church. I know in the spirit, but nevertheless, together we are partaking of communion. And that's such a blessing as the pastor for me to know that it's a blessing to you. We come to this table and we remind ourselves that we're coming to remember the Lord Jesus Christ who died for us upon Calvary's cross, that the power of his shed blood is the power of God to forgive us of all our sins, his body broken for us, that we may have eternal life through his death and resurrection. Friends, let us turn then to the table of the Lord and let us remind ourselves that of ourselves we're not worthy to partake of this table. This is such a, a sacred place. But that the Lord Jesus Christ has made us worthy. And we gather because we, we are made worthy. He has made us righteous in his shed blood. He has clothed us with the garments of righteousness. And he has made us his people. We are the people of his table and this bread and this cup is broken just for us, the body of Christ. And so we come to this table now. And we say with the words of St. Paul, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, 
you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Friends, so we come to the bread. Speaking of the body of Christ, we break the bread. Let us partake of the bread of our Lord Jesus. Yes, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that your body was pierced for us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you suffered so much upon the cross and even before the cross in the many beatings and floggings. Lord, we thank you for suffering for us. Your body suffered for us. We bless you, Lord. We come to the cup of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we together take of the cup, speaking of his shed blood. Lord, we thank you for the shed blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, that cleanseth us from all our sins. We thank you, precious Lord, that you were the perfect sacrifice for us, a sacrifice accepted, a sacrifice eternal for us. We bless you for the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, our precious and wonderful Saviour. Amen. Before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you, he is with you, he is with you. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations, and your family and your children, and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you.
Lord keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you Welcome back, friends. God bless you. I bet every one of you enjoyed the puppets last week. I know I did. I thought they were such a hoot. Ruth and I were really rolling about when we saw the puppets and we're singing that song to the Lord. We just got up and we just went for it. I'm sure everybody who saw those puppets last week were really blessed. Thank you, Liam and uh, Helen, for that. You know, I'm always thinking about the people in the church. Every day I think about you and pray for you. I have your names before me every day and as I see your names, I see your faces. And uh, I pray for each and every one of you. So please remember Ruth and I in your prayers. Please pray for us in our work. Praise God. Friends, we serve a, a wonderful, wonderful, great God. A God who loves us and he is the only true one God who has proved himself to mankind, who is big enough to come down to earth in the person of his son, to live and die and uh, to give to us a wonderful promise of salvation. That through the death of Jesus Christ, God's son, he gives us the wonderful promise of salvation that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life and I want to talk about the promises of God uh, this morning and I trust that this this talk on the promises of God will be a blessing to your heart and be an encouragement when we turn to the second book of Peter in chapter 1 and verse 4 it tells us that God gives to you and I the believer this wonderful wonderful thing exceedingly great and precious promises and that's what he says to every child of his i give to you exceedingly great and precious promises anyone reading through the bible would have noticed that the scriptures contain many 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 portions of god's word that speak of promises promises to all kinds of people he's a big-hearted god full of promises now it has been pointed out that there are over 33,000 promises in the Word of God. Think of that, 33,000 promises, which points out that he's a living God. Surely, if I promise to anybody, if you promise to anybody you'll do such a thing, you have to be around and alive to fulfil your promises. So when God gives such an overwhelming mass of promises, he has to be around to fulfill those promises. Therefore, he's a living God. He's living to fulfill those promises. Because he's a faithful God, he will fulfill those promises. Now, as I say, there's all kinds of promises in the Bible given to us by the Lord. There's the promises given to the nations of the world. They have a destiny. God has a plan and has a purpose for the nations of the world and he has promised the nations his faithfulness to them. He has promised also to creation, to this planet. This planet at the moment is sick, is unwell. But praise God, he's given promises in his word that he's going to bring healing to creation, to the animal world, the fish in the sea, birds of the air. He is going to heal the lands. He's going to heal the seas, the rivers. He has got many promises concerning that. Then there are promises that he gives to individual people, both in the Old Testament. We notice promises given to them like Abraham. And we see that also to us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he gives promises also. Then there are promises given to the bride of Christ. Personal promises of destiny and purpose and of hope. 
Then there are promises given to the land of Israel. The land of Israel is very precious to God. In fact, he says, it doesn't belong to the United Nations. It doesn't belong to Israel nor the Palestinians. It's his land. And he has got great promises for his land. And then there are promises given to the people of Israel. God has got many prom uh, promises for Israel. And then there's the promises that relate to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The promise that a day will come when the meek shall inherit the earth. At the moment when we realise that the, the meek are not running the shop. But others are running the shop. Well that will not always be. The time will come when the Lord Jesus will bring the meek of the earth. And the meek shall inherit the earth. And there shall become righteousness and peace throughout the nations. Then there's the promise of the new heaven and the new earth. God has promised a new heaven for us and a new earth. And so that's just a small selection of the promises of God that we find in the word of, of, of Scripture. Then there's that universal promise given to all people that whoever turned to God, no matter who they are, whatever nation they come from, whether they're young or they're old, God says, I will never cast out. So wonderful God that we serve. I will not cast out. Whoever comes to me, I will not cast out. Such a wonderful God. He won't because Jesus died upon the cross for the whosoever that comes to him. Then there is that text of scripture that says, for all the promises of God, in him, that's in Jesus, are yes, and they are amen, taken from the second Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20. In other words, it's a done deal. It's a done thing. These promises, they are a done deal in Christ. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who quickens the promises of God and make them fulfilled. It's a sad thing, you know, when somebody uh, promises to somebody else that they'll do something or give something and then they don't fulfill their promise that is a a, a sad thing uh, and you know let's be honest we've all done it and it's happened to us as well we've given promises and we've not been able to fulfill those promises or people themselves have promised us things uh, promised to do this that, and the other and they didn't they didn't turn up and they didn't do what they said but, you know, as parents, we need, we need to be careful about this. We can't go to a child and promise a child that we will promise to do this, that and the other and then let them down. Uh, and, and then another day we give more promises and we let them down. And then a month's time we give another promise and we, we let them down. You know, in time, that child's going to have a sick heart. Hope deferred, says the Bible, makes the heart sick. That child needs to know that the strong parents can bring across the fulfillment of the promises and if they can't then the, the parents should just say to the children look i'm sorry i couldn't do this because of a b and c and the child on their part needs to forgive the parents and let them go promises are, are powerful wonderful things but keeping them it, it, you know it, it is the big challenge but we have a god amen who not only gives us promises but fulfills those promises and the promises he gives to you and the promises he gives to me our God is faithful and will bring them about reading about Abraham this this morning God promised Abraham a son uh, and Abraham is 99 years of age and and it came true it came true he within the next nine months there was a child in his house and he rejoiced. God promised to bring Israel out of Egypt and he did bring them out of Egypt. It came true. God promised them to take them to the promised land and he did take them to the promised land. It came true. God promised that if Israel in the promised land sinned against him, that God would raise up a mighty nation. They would come into the promised land and they'll take God's people out of the promised land. And that happened. His promises are true. But then he also promised that 
After 70 years, he would bring them back into the promised land. And he did just that. He brought them back. He, his promise was true. God promised that in the last days, just prior to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, that a remnant of the Jews would return back to the promised land. Now, since 1948, the Jews have been flocking back to the promised land. And the reports are this year that there are more Jews in their thousands wanting to go back to the promised land from the nations of the world than there was last year, that the numbers are increasing. We, we are witnessing, friends, the promises of God before our eyes that the Jews are returning just before the Lord Jesus Christ comes. So we thank God that the Lord has got his hand upon Israel and the land of Israel. From the beginning of time, God promised a saviour. He won't leave the world alone to the sin. He promised there'd be a saviour and that through that saviour, salvation would be offered to the whosoever would come and believe. God promised the first coming of that saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. But he has promised a second coming of that saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know, friends, there are more promises concerning the second coming of Jesus than there was for the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we know every detail of the first coming of Jesus was fulfilled. And all these other promises concerning the second coming of Jesus, they also, praise God, praise God, amen, they will be fulfilled right to the letter. Promise of his first coming that he'd be born of the virgin. It came true. The promise that he'd be born in the town of Bethlehem of Judea. It came true. That was a promise. That he would come out of Egypt was another promise. And Jesus did spend as a, as, as a child his time in Egypt. And he came out of Egypt and he came back into the, the land of promise. That was a, a fulfilled thing in the life of Jesus. Then there was a promise that Jesus would begin his ministry in Galilee. Of all the lands, of all the people, of all the places in the Holy Land, God nailed it to the very place where he'd begin his ministry. And it came true that he would face a cruel death. Isaiah 53 and Psalm 22 to just give two areas of the scriptures concerning the promise of his cruel death for our salvation. It came true that it would rise again. It came true as every detail was fulfilled concerning the promise of his first coming. Friends, it will happen also for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that thrills my heart and soul. His promise of the return is the hope of you and me, but it's the hope of everybody in the world. Those that believe, yes, but for the salvation of this world, it is the hope of the world what about you do you hope and trust in the lord jesus christ him who is faithful and true he who keeps every promise that he gives to us i trust we're all putting our trust in this wonderful faithful god i hear the lord prompting me to a point out portion of god's word where jesus says <coughs> i go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That's found in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. As we look at that text of Scripture, there are four promises given by the Lord Jesus in those words. Like all the promises of God, they're given to us to give hope, to give comfort and to give a future and that's what he wants to give to us i do trust that you can give an amen to that and a hallelujah that you yes you have in the promises of god a hope comfort and a future jesus promised the believer that they will never have to face the judgment day that's a wonderful promise I and you, trusting you, do not have to fear 
facing the wrath of God on the judgment day when uh, the day of resurrection comes and all mankind stand before the throne. Well, friends, the promise is I don't have to be there. In fact, I will not be there by the grace of God. And you trust in Jesus do not have to be there because Jesus shields you through his precious blood and sacrifice. And so we pass, as Jesus says, from death to life. Amen. I give unto you eternal life and you shall never perish, says Jesus in John's Gospel, chapter 10. I praise God I'm not going to hell. I'm not going to a lost eternity. I'm going into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, re I rejoice in that promise of the Lord Jesus. Before we serve the living God, and because the Lord Jesus Christ promises people that they would hear his voice, I am so pleased that God is not a quiet God, shut away in heaven and doesn't speak to us. Jesus says in the promise that my sheep hear my voice. His promise is he will talk to us. He will speak to us. And every believer, every true believer in Jesus knows the voice of Jesus. They know when the Lord's speaking to their hearts. It's a promise. If the Lord has given to us a personal promise, then friends, we have a responsibility to, to walk in the light of those promises that God gives to us with clean hands. And a pure heart. There are many promises in the scriptures. And they come with a condition. There's our part to play. And there's God's part to play. When God gives us a promise. He, he just wants us to rise up to that promise. With clean hands and a pure heart. That we walk before the Lord. Uh, in that way and in that lifestyle. God gives these types of promises to us. Sometimes you know. They're so big, they're so beautiful, but they're so impossible to come around, to mature, to become real. We find that God gives promises about, like in the Old Testament and with us in our daily living, that, well, God, you, you've, I believe you've just said that to me, but how on earth that is going to come about? It's way beyond me. It's beyond my talents. It's beyond what I can well, can reach for in life. It has to be something where you come in, you get yourself involved and bring it about. And that's exactly why God gives us those kind of promises that are humanly impossible to bring about because he gives the promise, but he wants all the glory. And so he will bring it about in you and in me. He will fulfill his promises and he will prove himself as the living God and the God who is faithful to us, who he has promised. Concerning church revivals in the past, do you realise that many a man and woman of God who have been instrumental in bringing about revival have come to the word of God and they have looked at the word of God and they have found a promise that has so burned in their hearts. And they have gone before God in prayer in earnest prayer and they have through their prayers broke through and God has fulfilled uh, those promises concerning revival and uh, we're looking to God are we not for a mighty move from him and God moves upon people he moves upon churches and he moves upon nations in revival usually based on a promise that he has given to somebody through the scriptures Oh, through prophecy, he has given a promise that he will move. And we want God to move, don't we, friends? Now, I'm not one of those Christians that get up in the morning, go downstairs and go into my quiet time. And there I have this wonderful promise box. You know, they're made out of wood. And inside them, they've got about a hundred scrolls of promises. And they come with a, a little pair of tweezers and you. Put the tweezers in and you kind of you don't look you just kind of put your tweezers in and you prick out one of these scroll prophecies promises and you you unravel that promise and lo and behold that well that's yours today well <laughs> i don't kind of use that way of finding the promises of god but what i do do is i take of the word of god each day i come to the word of god 
And as I read the word of God, some text, some line of scripture leaps up and grabs me. Jeremiah says, is not my word like a hammer, like a hammer that breaketh the rock into pieces? And when you get one of those kind of what we call rhema words, it's like a hammer that has broke through our hearts and has spoken to us. It's like a promise, a living promise straight from God's word to our hearts. Now, that's how promises have come to me. And so I'd say to you, friends, don't neglect the word of God. Come to the word of God every day because Jesus has promised that he wants to speak to us. And so often when he speaks to us, he gives us a precious promise. And he is faithful who gave us the promise will also fulfill that promise if we walk humbly before him. Well, friends, God bless you with the promises of God. Shall we just pray? Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, we thank you that you are a living God who wants to prove himself to us as individual people by sowing the seeds of promises into our hearts. And Lord, we thank you for the many times when we've had these promises and they've been fulfilled. Our hearts have been so stirred and blessed. And I pray for each and every one of us that we will be students of your word and that we will be open of heart to receive your voice and your promises. We thank you, Lord. You are faithful to every one of us to fulfill your promises to us as individuals, as well as to the nations and as well as to Israel. Thank you, God, for being such a loving, faithful God to us in the precious and the wonderful name of Jesus. Now we continue, Lord, to to bring, Lord, the hospitals to you with this virus, oh God, the, the doctors, the many doctors who are on the front line with the nurses and the helpers and the ambulance drivers. Lord, we just ask, oh Lord, for your tender mercies to help this nation turn around to you, oh God. Deliver us from this virus, we pray. We pray, oh God, that time will come when we will all be meeting together in our churches. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. And we can rejoice with one another and sing the songs, the love songs to our God. Until that time, O oh Lord, keep your hand upon us, O oh God. Use us mightily, we pray, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, good morning to you, friends, and God bless you, each and every one of you. Yeah.